you will find uh, these in uh, many places in Upper Assam and also some places in Northern Assam. The water table is nearly at 60 feet. So at 60 feet of water, how a pond could exist for so long. So that kind of uh, technology can be a good uh, parampadic technology for all of us. If you do not have this dung, they do not have water for irrigation, they do not have water even for drinking. Namaskar. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, session. I am a PhD from Tejpur University. In that sense, I am local here. And uh, I am from this district. My place is 70 kilometers. And uh, when we were a child, we used to have a river back our village. We had a pond called Shyam Narayan in the name of King. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of lands river and lands covered with uh, thatch, birina, kohua. So when I went for engineering, then uh, government started an irrigation project uh, on that small rivulet, lift irrigation project. So as of now, when my mother expired uh, one month back, to complete the rituals, the river was not there. Then all those lands, they were, uh, uh, I think, uh, they were taken over. They were now under cultivation. Trees are growing out there. And uh, the irrigation project is gone. There is no sign of that irrigation project. The canals, brick canals, uh, now make way for roads. So this is, the pond is remaining there, that Shyam Naran pond. So that's why when, uh, uh, Devin is a friend of mine, so also is silent. Uh, when uh, he sent me that mail to talk about water and land management, land and water management, that is my specialty also. So that uh, I remembered my childhood. Now, what is happening actually? So uh, what I think is that uh, we should look back into our kind of thing. Why that pond still remaining there. So that's why my first point is traditional knowledge in water, that is supply management, get more water, and pond construction. You know, Assam has a very rich tradition of pond construction, and this is a pond constructed by Rani Ambika in uh, 1374 in uh, mm, 0.5 uh, half uh, square kilometer area. It's still remaining there. It's known as Sivshagar, and the place is named after that uh, pond. It's a huge pond. And uh, when the king desires to have a pond, he makes a decision, Sargadev we call it, call him. He makes a decision, and initiation is uh, made in consultation with uh, Borborwa, Fukon, and Deodhai, who used to be the priest. Then he orders the execution, and execution is done, done by Sung uh, Rang Fukon. Fukon is a, uh, his designation. And uh, the, this uh, Fukon is responsible for plan, measurement, time, material use. That pond took uh, almost 11 months to complete. So they conduct soil experimentation first. There are a lot of uh, things. Uh, they do it in the Avavisha, then uh, divide the whole uh, plot into squares, then started lighting deers then mark the dias we, we put out first, then again dig uh, some, then again put the dia. Then one Mati Chaleka who tastes the soil, his title is Borwa, Mati Chaleka Borwa, he tastes, he tastes Chaleka, yeah. So he tastes the soil for presence of water. Then uh, they finally identified the um, underground stream, then they put a Naga Stomba, then put pipes out there, then put one uh, uh, like uh, tamka plate for purifying the water. Uh, then from that uh, Naga stum, water comes out from the underground aquifer, artesian aquifer. Then they construct the embankment. That was the 
kind of pond constructed long back and that that is the pond that were that are there in my village still surviving the time name after shyamnaran raja so is it still there it's still there oh. even all these ponds are still there even that shivsagar pond it supplies water to the whole shivsagar town uh, and uh, not only that they used to maintain that level of water in that pond by having uh, interconnection with drainage system so these uh, three ponds are in a span of uh, nearly 25 uh, square kilometer all in sipsagar you'll find uh, these in uh, many places in upper assam and also some places in northern assam and uh, i i am still wondered in my village the water table is nearly at 60 feet so at 60 feet of water how a pond could exist for so long so that kind of uh, technology can be a good uh, paramparik technology for all of us we still construct pond we still construct omnit server but not with that our paramparik technology so we need to probably study it further and work on that line i am in that line but i admit my uh, in, in like still all those 30 years i could not do it i think someone should work on that next is in northern assam we have an irrigation system called dong this system is entirely managed by the community in those areas mostly babar areas these are almost like rajasthan when it doesn't rain if you do not have this dong they do not have water for irrigation they do not have water even for drinking so you can see that community they they render services they render services services for construct of construction of that check dam then take the water to their villages then replenish their water harvesting pond and use it for agriculture that water harvesting is pond is for livelihood sorry for daily uses then this is the small checks they have to repair in between when it rains so they have a very organized kind of system the main dong band that is managed by anchalik committee and depending on the source it can be 200 to 1500 villages there are different type of dong committees then the ghai dong that main dong is is managed by group committee which is from 15 to 180 villages then they have branch canals called sakha dong then they have pahi dong then they have panirach so all are managed by this sakha committee and under sakha committee they have a village captain and one peon and they have to render service 25 to 30 times in a year for repair of their check dams and also water channels and the they committee charges rupees 25 to 30 per biga for their works so this system has been in use since 1930 and still now it is prevalent in uh, at least four districts in assam uh, in northern assam then we we used to have a lot of traditional rainwater harvesting uh, we call that khal bhola and pukhuris uh, and uh, we used to have uh, in paddy fields kholu pukhuri tukuli pukhuri maju pukhuri bor pukhuri and this small water harvesting structure can look very small but it has a lot of uh, environmental service they trap wild fishes harvest rainwater trap sediment keep fill moist during drought period you can see the good growth of cucumbers there then also provide water to stray animals foxes then other small wild animals pukhuri means pond water pukhuri. pukhuri means pond i think it's very similar to hindi and nepali pokhra pukhuri pond then you can see this uh, they store excess uh, run of flood moderation then they also do ground water replenishment then residual moisture for a rabi crop this is a very common scene in assam you grow a uh, gourd or a cucumber in, in near to that uh, harvesting structure and uh, for my experience is that whenever you come forward for any kind of pond work lot of women come forward because that is their they they want to get involved because water is mainly for women and uh, i think uh, uh, 
my predecessor dr pathak has told you that higher in hills you need to have higher bunds ghonai ghonai dibale parbota to ruba hali you can see this this bunch can be as high as this much in hills this is in upper ten areas they grow a millet in the bunch and lower there they grow rice then in soil conservation probably we should thank the assamese for the farmers because they uh, leave a blanket of straw while harvesting to protect the soil from wind erosion because during harvesting time uh, what happens uh, there is it's moisture uh, this environment is very dry and we used to have this western winds so this uh, straws they protect the soil from my life what i feel is that riverside land management is very important for us because uh, the river just uh, behind my river uh, village is gone because of uh, human intervention allow to grow ikora birina kohua thet and other soil binding straws that's very important we should be allowed only for limited area seasonal cultivation uh, only pulses and some other uh, low height crops no banana no trees then you need to build a respect for the aquatic ecosystem then i'll speak uh, from one experiment i'll talk about assam lemon which is very popular in assam it's almost a part of our culinary uh, the idk is that uh, they are generally near water bodies near our pukuris and when you wash your dish when you come back you throw your residual water onto the base of the assam lemon plant frequently then it is always near the water body so what we did is why it happened we looked into the roots of the assam lemon and uh, it is very interesting that uh, more than 50% of the roots located within 60 cm from the base of the plants means more root activity in the this region 81.6% roots are there in that layer so that uh, probably that is why probably it requires frequent watering then the what why you did it is because uh, now this assam level plant is commercially cultivated the farmers they need to have an alternative we experimented with drip irrigation uh, then we conducted experiment for 2 years uh, ultimately what we started is that uh, two drippers of 2 lps capacity fitted at a distance of 30 cm from the trunk on either sub side of the plant is good for the plant uh, the irrigation frequency should be every day means what we came back is that frequent irrigation the traditional practice but we have provided modern alternative so what we did is we built on the traditional knowledge and worked out the technology thank you very much thank you